Hello and welcome. I'm Pastor Michael Pilmore, and I will be your training host during this segment of Back to the Basics on the Holy Spirit. Now tonight in this lesson, we will continue to look at the accounts in the book of Acts that describes believers being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then what happened after their infilling. To help us establish these truths in our hearts, let's go back and again look at accounts in the book of Acts describing believers being filled with the Holy Spirit and then we're going to ask the question, what happened? What happened? So, what do these scriptures say happened when the New Testament believers received the Holy Spirit? That's kind of what we're going to be looking at. Then can we prove that God's pattern, that, that God's pattern, every account of believers being filled with the Holy Spirit includes them speaking in tongues or in another language, to pray, to praise, and then to magnify God. And if we can, it's going to bring great confirmation, not, just not confirmation, but great confirmation that as modern believers filled with the Spirit of God, that God wants us to experience this gift of being able to speak in other tongues, to pray, to praise, and then to magnify Him as well in a different language. So let's begin tonight right with Scripture. We're going to open up with Acts chapter 10. We're going to look at verses 44 through 46. And I like to read out of the New Living Translation. I know every person has their favorite translation, but I like to understand what I'm reading. And after years of studying the King James, I still have to go and get outside material to understand some of the wording. And so I just found an easy translation that says, hey, <laughs> I'm speaking to you. And so... Uh, the New Living Translation, uh, verse 46 of Acts chapter 10 says this, Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, all who were listening to the message. So the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. And the Jewish believers, verse 45, the Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gifts of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles. Thank God for that. And verse 46 goes on to say, For they heard them speak, or they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. So what two things happened uh, that, that we can see here that these Gentile believers, that they, were f that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. What was the confirmation? What was the proof? Well, it says, for they heard, they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. They heard it. There was confirmation through the hearing. Then Acts chapter 19 and verse 6 goes on to tell us, Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. So when the Ephesian believers were filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened to them? They spoke in other tongues and prophesied. So again, we see a confirmation of something that was occurring or something that occurred to the speaking of, uh, of tongues and prophesying. Then in Acts chapter 8, this is a long one, as we say down here, a long one. Chapter 8, verses 5, we're going we're gonna to read all the way through verse 21 this evening. And it says, Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims, and many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. Man, what a day, huh? So there was great joy in the city. And then a man named Simon, who had been a sorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great, Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the great one, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astounded them with magic. But now the people believed 
Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. And as a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized and began following Philip wherever he went. And there, and he was amazed by the signs and the great miracles that Philip performed. I'd be amazed too. <clears throat> Verse 14 goes on to tell us that when the apostles in Jerusalem heard the, that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. And as soon as they arrived, as soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come unto any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Peter and John laid their hands on these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw this, that the Spirit was also given with the apostles, laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy this power. And he said, let me have this power too, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You can have no part in this for your heart is not right with God. So in this passage of scripture, it's not as obvious at first glance that the believers spoke in tongues when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But let's take for a moment and just dig in a little deeper and see what we can learn here. In verses 5, and then also 12 through 14, what did Philip do? Well, we see him preaching Christ. We see him preaching Christ. And then how did the people respond to the gospel? As he was proclaiming the good news, how did they respond? By believing. They believed what he was proclaiming and preaching. And then not only did they believe it, they received it and were baptized. So... The people of Samaria heard the gospel and believed the word. And then we would say, as we've studied in our last previous studies, were born of the spirit. They were born again. They were born of the spirit. And then if we move through verses 14 and 17, we see Peter and John coming in to the, uh, or upon the scene. And what did they do? As soon as they arrived, once they hit, we, we would say it like this, they hit the ground running. Once they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. Man, they didn't wait. They got right down to business. And then Peter and John laid their hands on these believers, and the Bible says they received Aren't you glad that we don't have to beg for the gift? I mean, they received the Holy Spirit. And then if we review verses 18 through 19, we see that there was this dude named Simon. Simon was a sorcerer. He, was, he dealt with the occult. He dealt with the powers. He dealt with the magic. He understood, and he wanted what they had. And he saw that he, he wanted that same power to do what they did. Because it says in, in, in verse 18, when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on people, what did he do? He, offered, he thought it could be bought. He offered them money to buy the power. Reminds me of that song, I got the power. <laughs> Simon didn't get the power. Because his heart was not right in this desire to obtain this spiritual power. And he thought he could buy the power from the disciples. Thank God that this gift is, cannot be bought. It is freely given. It's a free gift. You don't have to pay for it. Jesus already bought it. He paid for it when he died on that cross and when he was raised from the dead. He gave us the right to become children of God. When we became children of God, he sent another as a helper to assist us, to guide us, to lead us in all of our affairs. 
And so what did Simon see that so intrigued him? Well, we see that Simon's heart was not right with God and his motives were in the wrong place. But still, we could learn something from this passage of Scripture and the way Simon responded. Simon saw something that got his attention. Simon saw something that got his attention. And as a former sorcerer, he was not unaccustomed to seeing supernatural things. And as a person who followed Philip the evangelist, he saw many miracles, signs, wonders, and healings unfold right before his eyes. Yet, he never offered Philip money to have the power to heal people. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So what was it about seeing people being filled with the Holy Spirit that got Simon's attention? He definitely, we would say it like this, he most definitely saw something so unusual that when the Samaritans were filled with the Holy Spirit that he wanted that same power. And yet he had, he had transver transversed around the countryside with Philip and he saw the miracles. But what was so different? What, what was it that he saw? Well, based on the consistent record of, all of the other accounts in the book of Acts where people were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues, we can easily conclude he saw them speaking in tongues. And we see this in verse 21. In verse 20 and 21, Peter called Simon out and revealed his impure motives because it says in verse 20, but Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. And you could have no part in this for your heart. Your heart is not right with God. Now, it's interesting to note here how Peter made it here. I'm going to use two words, two of the same words in the same paragraph. It's interesting to note that Peter made an interesting statement when he said, you have no part in this for your heart is not right with God. Now, going back to the old King James Bible, <laughs> going back to the King James Bible, this, this verse, I learned this verse a little bit differently. It says that you have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. The word matter in this particular verse, then, is the Greek word logos, or logos, however you want to say it. And logos, logos is often translated as a word saying and speech in other places in the New Testament. It's a, a word that is trans, it's translated as a word, or saying, or speech. And the meaning for logos or logos includes a word or saying that which is spoken. It also means an account which one gives by word of mouth. So we could read verse 21 this way, reading from the old King James, of course. You have neither part nor portion in this word, in this saying or speech, or that which is spoken. So we can see from our study of looking at the accounts of believers who received the initial infilling of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts that they all spoke in tongues. And the Bible tells us they also magnify God. They may even have prophesied, but the one common denominator in every account is that they spoke in tongues. And that's great news for us because the same thing still happens today when we accept and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will have the supernatural ability to speak in other tongues, to praise, to pray, and then magnify the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, in our next lesson, we're going to look at different kinds of tongues and Pastor Kim will be bringing that for us. And this concludes this lesson. I'm back to the basics on the Holy Spirit. What is the evidence? I'm Pastor Michael Pilmore. Thanks for watching.